Bibles and go with me. We're going to read the book of James, chapter 1. We're going to read verses 2, then we're going to go through verse number 4, then we're going to jump to verse 12, and then go to verse 15. If you didn't get a message out there when you walked in, uh, the ushers will hand that to you, and uh, you can follow along with us. You're watching online. We are working very hard. We're going to get the outline online, and uh, I just love what God's doing through our online community. We have people see, sending in messages from the Philippines, from uh, across the United States, and it's just really cool, guys, what God is doing, but... Tonight, um, I'm excited to teach this word, and um, it's going to bless. If it doesn't bless you, then maybe I'll just minister to me. Come on, somebody. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4, and then we'll jump 12 to 15. I'm going to read the New Living Translation. You can follow with me here on the screens or with your translation of the Bible that you have in your hand. The Bible reads, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, turn your neighbor and say he's talking to all of us. Okay, dear brothers and sisters, that's all of us. He says, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for what? Great complaining. Consider an opportunity for great what? Joy. Come on. In other words, when you're going through something difficult, you have a choice. A choice to rejoice or a choice to complain. I don't know about you, but complaining don't change nothing. I'm going to just rejoice in God. Say amen. He says, opportunity for great joy. Verse 3, it says, for when you know... That when your faith is what? Tested. Someone say, my faith is tested. Do you know anybody who tests your faith? Don't point. Come on, somebody. Okay. Maybe you brought them to church tonight. Maybe you checked them into the kids' church. Maybe you drove here. Maybe you came without them. You're like, my patient, my peace was, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not hanging. Wait, okay. Lord, help us. He says, when your faith is what? I need you to see this because I'm going to zoom in that our faith does get tested. Your endurance has a chance to what? Grow. See, in life, you can either go through it or grow through it. Tonight, we're going to learn how to grow through it. Verse 4 says, so let it grow, for when it endurance fully developed, you'll be perfect, complete, needing nothing. Jump down to verse 12. It says, God blesses those who patiently endure what? Testing and temptation. God blesses those who patiently, purposefully prayerfully, trusting God, endure this season of testing and temptation. Scripture says, afterward they will receive a crown of life that God has promised to those who love. Him. And I feel right now already an unction of the Holy Spirit. I felt God tell me to tell someone who's going through a season of testing, someone who's going through a season of, of temptation. I feel God telling me to tell somebody, baby, this is just a test. Man of God, this is just a test. God says, if you stay strong, you're going to receive the crown of blessing. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody's getting ready to go to another level. Tell your neighbor, I think he's talking to me. I think he's talking to me. He says, afterwards, someone say afterward. Oh, I feel like preaching tonight. I've been doing these conversations on Sunday. I'm going to let it go. Come on, somebody. The Bible says, Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has what? Promised to those who love. Verse 13. And remember, tell your neighbor, remember this? When you are being tempted, do not say God is tempting me, for God never tempted to do, never tempts to do wrong and never tempts anyone else. 14. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to to death, to, to, I'm sorry, yes, to death, I apologize, to death. So scripture is saying God doesn't tempt us, but he will let us be tested because God wants to promote us. Tonight's title, tonight's message is a prophetic declaration, and it is this, I pass the test. Okay, I need you to say this, say, I pass the test. Don't say, I think I'm going to pass, I might pass, I think I'm failing. That is negative talk, that is defeat talk. Tonight, God wants to put a faith statement in every man, woman, and child, every person online that says, no, I am going to pass this. This test will not, will not succeed me. I will succeed this test. Tell your neighbor, say, I passed the test. You're like, but I'm still in it. I know. I know. But tonight, we're going to pass the test. Amen? Let's pray one more time. Father, I thank you, Lord. And I know, God, already there's such an anticipation in the room. This is not hype. It's Holy Spirit. And, Father, I believe this word resonates because there are people that are being tested. There are men that feel tested in this season. Women, marriages, families, young people. And, God, I just ask you tonight that you would give me the grace to minister your word to your people. 
with your power, your purpose, and your will. Tonight, God, it is not about any man or any person. It is about you, Jesus. So speak to us, encourage us. And Father, tonight I pray if there be anyone within the sound of my voice that is going through a testing season, that God, you would give them the encouragement to pass the test. They will not fail. They will not throw in the towel. But they will pass with flying colors in Jesus' name. Somebody who's going to pass the test, give God the best praise you can on a Wednesday night. Come on, that's right. You may be seated and give three people a high five and say, we're going to pass this test. Tell them, say, we're going to pass. We're going to pass, uh-huh. We are going to pass. Don't go too far, Omar, because I feel the Holy Ghost going to break out on somebody tonight. We're going to pass this test. Just so I know I'm talking to the right people, has anybody ever gone through a hard time? Raise your hand. Come on. I'm talking to the right, okay, I'm in the right room. All right, come on, somebody. If you're online, just put a little hand emoji. I know it's you. Come on now. Okay. All of us, we've gone through some hard times. We've all been through hard times. The reality is, as they say, you know, I don't look for hard times. Hard times look for me. Come on, somebody. You know? I should rather say like this. Any married people in the room? Come on. Okay, hard times. I say like this. Any kids, any, any parents in the room? Come on. Hard times. That's right. We're going to talk about parenting this Sunday. Just shameless plug. Get to this Sunday. We're going to talk about parenting. But we all go through hard times when we will be tempted, watch this now, to throw in the towel. Everybody. Every area of your life, every commitment of your life will be tested. The enemy will test every commitment, every commitment to be a father, commitment to be a husband, a commitment to be a follower of Christ, a commitment to be a godly mom, a commitment to be a godly woman. Every commitment in your life will be tested. It will be tested in your life, and that's why it's important that we understand that God wants us to pass the test. Now, um, the best thing I could tell you is when God wants to encourage us to pass the test, what God does for us is he often when he wants to encourage you to pass the test, he gives you a taste of your future. Okay? So God will sometimes give you, will give you a vision, he'll give you a passion, he'll give you a desire, so that you can taste where it is God wants to take you. Now, the best analogy I can give you that comes to mind, and I wrote this down, I hope you kind of catch it here, is my wife and I have, have tried to make lifestyle changes slash diets. I call them diets. They know it's a lifestyle change. And... and <laughs> And, and, and the most difficult place to walk through when you're on this uh, lifestyle change or diet, you're trying to eat healthy, is this place called Costco. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Because Costco has all these free things. And if you really go to the next level, go to Northgate. Now Northgate started doing these free gifts. I'm like, Northgate, why you got to do these tres leches on me? Come on, man. Here, have a little piece of cornbread. Have a little piece of tres leches. I'm like, I'm already in like two cakes already, you know. But the reality is, you want to know why they give you a little taste? So you can buy the whole thing, Okay. Can I tell you tonight, God wants to give you a taste of your vision, a taste of your future, a taste of the goodness of God. So you can say, God, I want you. That is why when we're in worship, you get to see God fill my life with the peace of you. That's why when you're praying, God will show you a prophetic vision because God says, I want to give you something that you will not give up on the battle that you're fighting. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Because God wants you to pass the test. Now, in the verses we just read, I want to draw your attention back here to uh, verse number uh, 12. And I know we read verse 2, and I'll come back to it here in a second. But verse number 12, the Bible says this. Says, so God blesses those, watch this now, who patiently endure testing and what? Temptation. Now, most of us understand testing, and, and, and I'll get to that in a second. But let me just start with the second word first, and I'll get to the first part. But the Bible says that God blesses those who endure temptation. And I want to just define that because I've had actually a couple of recent questions in regards to temptation. I want to tell you two things. If you're taking notes, write this somewhere down on your notes. If not, just make a mental note of this. But temptation is not a sin, okay? Temptation is not a sin. How do I know that? Because even Jesus was tempted. So when you're being tempted, it is not a sin. It's what you do with temptation that makes it a sin, okay? So temptation can't be a sin because if temptation was a sin, then Jesus sinned. But Jesus didn't sin. He was sinless. But the Bible says Jesus was tempted in every way we were tempted and did not sin. So I think a lot of times what we need to understand to pass the test is you didn't fail just because you were tempted. 
Okay, so a lot of times I think people are like, well, I'm just tempted, so therefore I must, I'm, I failed, I suck as a Christian, and the devil's a liar, because the devil, I'll tell you, you ain't no Christian, look at that, look at, look at you, you're still battling the same battles for 10 years, you're not no Christian, how are you going to go to church, how are you going to lift your hands, how are you even going to look, how are you, and he tries to tell you all this stuff, you need to just tell the devil, get out of my ear, I know I may be tempted, but I'm going to pass this test, I'm not going to throw in the towel. Now, you need to know this because you'll be tempted all kinds of stuff, but it's not temptation that's a sin. It's what you do with the temptation that makes it a sin. So don't give up just because you're tempted. Keep fighting. Keep praying. Keep worshiping. Keep reading. Keep going to connect group. Keep coming to midweek. You keep going. Shout amen. So, so we got to realize temptation is not a sin. The second thing about temptation you got to understand is that temptation is a daily battle. Write that down somewhere. Temptation is a daily battle battle it is a daily battle why is that because the bible says the devil tempts our flesh okay so he can't tempt your spirit that's a whole nother message he can only tempt your flesh and so it's a daily battle because guess what you live in your flesh every day okay if you're not living in your body tomorrow we need to do prayer okay come on so you're this body every day so this flesh this mind it's a daily battle. So because it's a daily battle, I have to have a daily word. I got to have a daily, you know, uh, um, uh, a prayer life because it will come and it will try to get me to fail the test. But what I love about this is that God knows this. Now, now stay with me here. The scripture says that Jesus was tempted in every way we were tempted. So God knows what it is to walk in this flesh. Jesus walked in the same flesh we did. So nobody can go before God and say, God, you don't know what it is to be human. He said, yes, I did. Look at the nails in my hand. Okay. He lived a sinless life. So he knows what it is we go through. But God in his infinite wisdom penned James chapter 1 and verse 12 before you think, well, that sucks every day I battle temptation. God says, no, you think that's tough. But God says, actually, that's the road to your blessing. Because in verse 12, watch what it says here. It says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. I'm going to read it again in case you missed it. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. One more time for the people that really go through hell and high water. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Why do we need to get this scripture in our heart is this, that when I'm going through testing, I'm actually being set up for blessing. When I'm going through difficulty, it's actually an indication of what God wants to do in my life. So here's your first point. Write this down. I got two points tonight and a couple sub points, and we'll see where it takes us. But point number one, write this down. This is scripture. Now, I'm exegeting from the text. This is not Pastor Josiah's point. This is the Bible point. Number one, write this down. Before the blessing comes a testing. Okay. Because the Bible says God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. So the blessing, it comes after the testing. So if you are in a season of testing... If you are in a season where you feel, man, I feel like left, right is, is testing me, I want to tell you, you are being set up for a season of blessing. You ought to clap just right there. I mean, and I'm not just trying to motivate you. I'm trying to give you revelation. That the Bible says that when I'm tested, God actually is set it up to release blessing. And so I want you to remember that in these testing moments, Okay, and I want to give you some keys to understand why, why we go through these moments here in a second. But you got to realize that the way God set it up in his infinite wisdom is he rewards those who pass the test. That he has a certain blessing. Now, I'm not talking about heaven, so don't misinterpret what I'm saying here. It, Jesus plus nothing equals heaven. You'll go to heaven. And, and you know what I mean, you can, you can be like, God, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I'm, and I'm not talking about making it to heaven. I'm talking about you experiencing heaven on earth. I'm talking about releasing blessing in your marriage. I'm talking about releasing blessing in your home. I'm talking about releasing blessing on your life. I'm talking about releasing blessing on your future, your finances, your children. Anybody want to release blessing in your life? Say amen. Okay. And so how we do that is we got to look at the test as an opportunity to release blessing in our lives. Now, when we are tested and when we go through these things, it is important to remember that when you are going through a test... It's an open book test. 
Come on. Read the Bible. This test is an open book test. God's not trying to hide you the answers. He's like, it's right here. The right way to respond is right here. And if you feel like God is silent, the teacher's always silent when you take the test, but you got an open book to be able to pass the test. Someone say, I'm going to pass the test. You see, God allows this again to happen. Now, I want to make this statement, and if you want to write this down, you can. This is very important to know, is God doesn't tempt you, but he does test you. God doesn't tempt you, but you better believe it, baby. He will test you. Man of God, he will test you. He will allow you to go through a season of testing. He will allow you to go through these processes. And the reason why he allows that is not because God doesn't know the kind of person you are. God just wants to show you what's in you. And he wants you to be able to show the world. In other words, when the world, when, when the devil squeezes you, what's going to come out? What's going to come out? When life puts a squeeze on you, it's like a sponge. When you squeeze the sponge, we find out what's on the inside. God says, I'm going to let you go through a season of testing, and I want you to show the world what's on the inside. And when you show the world what's on the inside, I release a blessing because of your obedience and your faithfulness to me. Say amen. I want to read the scripture one more time. I read it for the giving, but I'll read it again here. Luke chapter 16 and verse 10, it says, if you are faithful in the little things, you'll be faithful in the large ones. If you're dishonest in the little things, you won't be honest in greater things. God is saying that he releases bigger blessings when we're faithful in the seasons of testing. Now, how do we be faithful in the season of testing? I want to zoom in on the life of Abraham. Stay with me because this right here is powerful. Abraham is the one whom which God releases the greatest blessing on planet earth. It was Abraham who was the father of faith. It was Abraham that we find Genesis 12 where the Bible says, I will bless those who bless you, Abraham. I will curse those who curse you. He says, through you, all of the nations will be blessed and there is a favor on your life, Abraham. But it was Abraham who passed these tests in his life. There were three key tests in how he responded in which God rewarded him. And the first one, it's in, in your notes, sub point. You're going to want to write this down. The three areas of tests that Abraham trusted God with, and you, will not, you and I will have to trust God to see the blessing, the generational blessing, number one, is with your future. Say, I trust God with my future. You see, Abraham had to pass the test of trusting God with his future. The scripture actually says that Abraham trusted God's promise that he would have a son. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 4 and 5, it's in your notes, but we'll also put it up here. The Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, being Abraham, and he says, This man will not be your heir, but a son in, is your, I'm sorry, a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky, count the stars. Check. Count the stars. He says, if needed, you can count. He says, if indeed you can count them, then he said, so shall your offspring be. So check this out. God says, Abraham, I got your future. Follow me. I have you, your future. Let me lead you from the place you are to the place you have to be. Be faithful to me, Abraham. And the Bible says that Abraham began to trust God and say, God, I trust you that my wife will get pregnant and I will have a miracle child even in my older age. In other words, what is dead can come alive and I'm not going to do it my way. I'm going to do it your way. This is a test. Tell your neighbor, it's a test. God, this, even this evening, you're in this room. I am telling you, God is presenting to you a test. And the test is this. Will you trust God with your future or your hands with your future? It's a test. And God is trying to show you. He's saying, I want to bless you, but you got to follow me, Abraham. You got to do it my way, Abraham. I have a greater plan, a greater hope, and a greater future. I'm going to trust you. This is a test. So every day the decision is, God, do I trust you with my day today, or am I going to try to take things in my own hands? Hey, am I going to try to be control freak in the sense where, where no, Lord, I'm going to try to fix it my way instead of fixing it God's way. 
And so the Bible actually says that Abraham, uh, you know, i, I got to just kind of summarize here. He tries to take things into his own hand, and, and he's like, well, you know, the miracle's not taking place. And so uh, he ends up hooking up with Hagar, and he has another child, and, and, and things get all, all hairy and messy. And, and then he's trying to, trying to make the miracle happen on his own time, and, and, and things get all confused. And this is a picture of what can happen with so many of us is we get confused, and we try to make things happen instead of letting God making those things happen and trusting him come on say amen now you might say well what do I do then do I just sit on my couch and say okay God go for it it's all your show no remember it's an open book test so what do I do I run the play I run what God is telling me to do. I, I, I trust in the processes and the future that God has. So I'm going to live according to his word so I can walk out the things that God is calling me to live. So how can I trust God with my future? You got to know the word. Come on, someone say know the word. I had this fun conversation a few years back. Let's have it again. If I could talk to your Bible and I set up a counseling session with your Bible brought it into the office and your Bible said I want to meet with Pastor Josiah sure come on Bible what would your Bible tell me about you he doesn't talk to me what would your Bible say you know he he doesn't hold me like he holds his phone <laughs> oh I got quiet come on somebody what would your Bible say you know he does he, he, does, he just puts me off to the side and doesn't pay attention to me. You know, what would your Bible say? What, what, what would it be? It's like the story of, uh, of the woman who invited the pastor over for dinner. And, and when he, she invited, they invited the pastor over for dinner and the family was there. And so the pastor, uh, you know, got one of the spoons and he hid it. And for a whole year, that family thought the pastor had stolen a spoon because it was a nice china spoon. And the following year... They invited him over and they said, we just got to ask you, did you steal that spoon? And the pastor said, no, I put it in your Bible. <laughs> Come on. That's cold, huh? That's cold, huh? That's messed up. Burn. Oh. I trust you with my future, Lord, but I have no idea what your word says. I trust you with my future, Lord, that you're going to birth something out of my life, but I have no idea what the promises of God are. I, I go to church, but I don't, I don't get the word in me. Come on. It's not being a good church attender. It's no, I want to have the word in my heart, and I want to live out God's future because I'm going to pass the test. Someone shout, pass the test. But how are you going to pass the test if you don't got the answers? Right. You're like, how do, oh, this, I don't know how to, this, this question, I wasn't prepared for this. You can prepare for it. Someone say, I passed the test. So what we do is we try to ring, wing it. Is there a multiple guess option here, Lord? A, B, C, or D? I'll go with C because if I do C, you know what I mean? Like, so guess what happens? If you don't pass the test, you got to retake the class. And this is what so many people, they live like the nation of Israel. They're wandering in the wilderness. And God's like, I can't get you into the promised land until you pass that test. And so metaphorically, we can still be in first grade when God's like, I want you already in college level anointing. But we got to pass the test. Someone shout, pass the test. Pass the test. Tell your neighbor, the answers are in the book. So, so God gives Abraham, a promise of his future, and where's our promise? It's in the Bible. You might say, well, pastor, I don't have no promise. Get a verse. If you can't hear God's voice, get a verse. And be like, God, I got a verse. Your word is your voice. If the Bible says it, it has the authority of heaven. Come on. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall endure forever. I may not have heard your voice, but I'm going to grab a verse, and I'm going to hold on to that promise, and I'm going to declare it. Some will say, get a verse. <laughs> well, I haven't heard God. Well, I'm trying to give you verses tonight. Just take one. Come on, somebody. All right. So Abraham had the test of his future. And then number two, this is the life of Abraham. He had the test of finances. I want you to read this here. The Bible actually tells us, watch this, how Abraham trusted God with his finances. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 19 and 20, 
This is the testing of Abraham. And what's so beautiful is later on God finally calls him a friend. And all, but we'll get to this second. I'm going to get ahead of myself. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 9, the Bible said, And he blessed him, and he said, Blessed be Abram of God's most high, of, the, of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be uh, God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand, and he gave him a tithe of all. This is beautiful. Because Abraham knew if I'm going to pass the test, God, I trust you with everything. I trust you with my finances. I trust you with my future. And I, later on, we'll read, trust me with my family. And I want to tell you tonight, um, it's biblical, and you can give me the stink eye all you want, but I'm telling you, you could say, God, I trust you, but you don't have my wallet. God says, and your heart's not with me. You see, it's a test. Someone say, it's a test. The tide's a test. So Abraham was like, God, you bless me, you gave me a promise, so I'm going to honor you with my tithe. Now, for those that say, well, the tithe is a, is an, a law, Old Testament thing. This is Genesis that Moses hadn't even written the law yet. I know you hear uh, people read Malachi. Malachi hadn't even happened yet. The tithe was in Genesis chapter 14. Why? Because it is a principle of heaven and earth that, God, I honor you and I trust you that it's not me building my kingdom, but I'm building your kingdom. Come on, somebody. Shout amen. It's a test. You know, it's funny that on money they put in God we trust. And money can be funny too. Come on, somebody. In God we trust. I think they should put those on credit cards too, but anyway, you know. In God we trust. But uh, every dollar bill they put in God we trust. You don't know why the forefathers of America did that? And don't believe, you know, don't smoke what the world's smoking, okay? Th this nation was set up on Christian foundations. It's even on your dollar bill. And guess what? It's on the $100 bill, too. You should look at it. It's right there. And God we trust only on a dollar bill. No, it's on a hundred, too. In God we trust. And let me tell you something. Why is that on there? Because they knew, let us never trust in this. We trust in God. He's our source. He's our provider. He's good. And God, I put you first. Say amen. And so we, as God's people, this is a test. And so many people, they can pass other areas, but it's like a car. They don't pass this one, so they have only three wheels, not four wheels. And they don't trust God with finances, so they don't have the blessing of in their finances. Don't worry, we're not receiving an offering right now. I'm just teaching you. Some of y'all getting all nervous. I'm teaching you. Because if you don't get this area in your life, you're going to say, God, bless my business. This is a lot of people pray, God, bless my career. And God's like, why would I bless your career when none of it has to do with blessing the kingdom? It's real talk. God, take away all my debt. Why? You don't even support what I'm doing. Yeah. Everybody wants God to get behind their thing, but they don't want to get behind God's thing. <laughs> That's not how it works. I know I'm preaching good. Good sermon, Pastor. Preach. I'm trying. You know, it's like we taught it in the in, in, uh, in, in thing. Make God your business partner. Say, God, you're my business partner. God, everything you bless this business with, I will honor you. Watch the floodgates of heaven come upon you because you pass the test. Someone shout, I pass the test. Number three, write this down. How else did Abraham pass the test? He passed it with his future. He passed it in finance. And then he passed it with the first. Okay, what do I mean by that? He actually, God finally blessed him with a child. And I want to read this to you in Genesis chapter 22. God blessed him with a child. Watch this here. In verse 1 and 3. It says, sometime later, God, what did he do? Tested. Oh, that word. I, I do a series on tested. I feel, man, be careful. I'll turn it into a 12-week series. Come on, somebody. <laughs> sometime later, what did God do? Tested Abraham. It's not always, watch this now, the devil, God puts you and he says, I'm testing you because I want to bless you. I'm letting you go through stuff because I want you to show the world how good I am and I reward those who diligently seek me. And so the Bible says, some later God tested Abraham and he said to him, Abraham. And he says, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son. Someone say the first. He says, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain, I will show you. God says, I want you to sacrifice what I blessed you with. <laughs> God will often test you with what he blesses you with. Okay. He says, sacrifice what I gave you. Would you give it all away for me? 
Now, you might say, man, that's hardcore. No. You see, God doesn't want part of your heart. He wants all of your heart. He says, Will you be, would you give it all up for me, Abraham? He said, we're about to find out. So the scripture says that he goes to sacrifice his son. Now, this is pretty, you know, radical. You're like, well, sacrifice, man, that is, that is what? In this time, the cultural context of it was, it was actually a, uh, if you, again, you read Bible dictionaries. Uh, if you're like, what's that? Join Bible college, shameless plug. Next semester starts in January, amen. <laughs> but you begin to read the cultural climate. It was actually uh, uh, cults and false people would, fall and to, would do that to false gods. They would sacrifice their children. So God was saying, would you do for me what the world's doing for the world? They're giving their life for nonsense. They're giving their life to, to, to and again, I love trees and I love the planet. They're giving their life to save trees, but you won't give your life to save souls. In essence, the context is, would you do for me what the world's doing for the world? That was the story. They're giving their life to build stuff. Would you give your life to build me? To build what I want and to build my will in your heart? He says, sacrifice your son. So let's go on to verse number uh, uh, three. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac, whom he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering. He set out for the place God had told him about. In verse 11, he finally gets to the place, Mount Moriah, and he's about to sacrifice, you know, his son. And in verse 11, says, but the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up there in the thicket. He saw a ram caught by its horns and he went over and he took the ram. He sacrificed a burnt offering instead of his son. 14. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide and to this day on the mountain the Lord, it says on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. In this verse what we see here is God says now I know and what am I trying to tell you? I'm telling you is that I pray you have a now I know moment with God where God says I know that you're one of my greatest followers. I know that you are one of my, one of my real ones come on are there any real ones in the house tonight I know you're one of my real ones because you followed me even when the world wouldn't follow me point number two write this quickly adversity why does God test us because adversity is the greatest university that's why trust me I am telling you right now it is the greatest university when you go through a season of testing God doesn't just want you to go through it God wants you to grow through it I'm talking to somebody right now who's in a season of testing. I don't know who you are, but I feel we're having a conversation, and I want to interpret what you're going through. It's not just about what's happening to you. It's about what God wants to build in you. And one of the, say this correctly, one of the detriments of the season of testing will be if you did not learn what God was trying to show you during that season. In other words, you're just going through it. You're just, I'm just going through it, just kind of going through it. You know, people say, Christians, what's happening? Just going through it. You know, I'm just kind of going through it right now. I'm going through it. Pray for me. I'm going through it. Okay. I know. We're all going through it. Welcome to the go through it club. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to keep going through it. How you doing, girl? I'm going through it right now. Pray for me. I'm going through it. Okay. But here's the difference. I'm not just going to go through it. I want to grow through it. Come on, I want to grow through it. So, so, so I want you to change your language and your approach. And, and in a season of testing, be like, I'm, I'm growing right now. God's growing me right now. He's challenging me. God's growing me right now in the area of trust. God's growing me right now of how to be a husband. God's growing me right now of how to be a better mom. God's growing me right now how to get more into prayer. God's growing me right now to not trust my feelings but trust my faith. God's growing me right now of how to be a real worshiper. God's growing me right now how to be not a circumstantial Christian but to be a faithful Christian. God's growing me right now of how it is to believe for miracles when I lost my job. God's growing Growing me right now of how to take the bus. I don't know who I'm talking to. God's growing me right now of how to be single and happy. God's growing me right now of how to deal with a disobedient child. God's growing me right now of how to memorize scripture. God's growing me. I'm telling you, God is growing you. He's growing this church. You ain't just going, you're growing. Give someone a high five and say, I'm growing. I'm growing, man. 
Nah, I'm just going through it. No, I'm in school. And it's called the school of trusting God. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm in school. Come on now. I'm in school. God, God's schooling me right now. He's developing me into who I'm called to be. Acts chapter 13, verse 22, last verse here. It says, and when he had removed Saul, uh, him being Saul, he raised up for them David as king. You guys know this verse, a key verse of our church family. He raised up David as a king. God is trying to raise up some kings and some queens and some people of authority. He's trying to raise up some people that have a kingdom mentality. He raised up David as king to whom also he gave testimony. God gave a testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man of my heart who will do all my will. I want to draw your attention to the word testimony. What is the word, the root word in testimony? Test. There is some test in the testimony. Y'all heard the sayings, I'll preach them. A mess in my message. Hey, come on, you know. I'll say them if you want me to. But here's the, it's right there. Test. Emoni. Test. You can't pass the test. You can't have my testimony. Because you didn't go through my test. You can't, you can't, you can't ride on somebody else's testimony. Because you didn't go through their test. You got to go through your own test to have your own testimony to tell somebody, somebody about the test that you survived. God says, I want to give a testimony about how David passed the test. That means God was in heaven. I feel like preaching to somebody. God was in heaven watching David take the test. He was looking at David. He saw David going, I don't know about this one. This is a hard one. Give me some scratch paper. Two plus two is five. Oh, put some tape on my mouth. And he's like, I don't know how to respond. There's a big old giant. He's ugly. Goliath. He's undefeated. But I'm going to trust my God that if there's a giant, it's just a test. And I'm going to pass the test. And I'm going to have a testimony that's not going to be about how good I am, but how good God was the devil thought he was gonna tear my family apart but God came through cuz I passed the test men give God a shout and a roar because men are gonna pass the test ladies give God a shout because you're gonna pass the test young people give God a praise cuz you're gonna pass the test you ain't gonna give in to other temptations you're going to pass the pen. Oh, give God praise. I'm done.